Okay, next we're going to attach our motors onto our arms, and we're going to attach obviously the six motors to the six arms. So, what I found, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to bend this connector just a little bit have to feed them one at a time through one of these holes. Be able to get them all through there with the bullet connectors. Feed that through there like that. Straighten up and line up the holes for the screws right there. Okay. So you're going to use the screws that came with the frame kit, and they're these uh, 7.5 by 3 millimeter screws that come with the frame kit. Definitely going to need some thread locker on here to make sure that these don't come loose because they're just screwing into plastic in the back. So, or through the plastic. So you're just going to line that up, put your thread locker screw in there, and screw it down there nice and snug. Put all four screws in, make sure they're nice and snug. Um, what I found was since you're screwing into plastic, if you screw really, really hard, it'll actually deform the plastic. So that's why it's important to use the thread locker. So then you put all six of your motors on your arms, and we'll go on from there. Okay, now that we got all our motors in place on our six arms, now we're going to attach each one of the arms onto the top and bottom plate. So as you can see here, we got our bottom plate with all our ESCs connected. My now, well, my uh, insulation tape has or um, adhesive is dried up. So this goes on the bottom. This is going to screw on here. This is going to screw on the top. So there's two screws on the bottom. There's four screws on top. And use the uh, screw set that comes with uh, the frame, which is uh, three um, times six millimeters, and there's 36 of these screws. So again, we're going to put all these screws and attach them uh, onto the uh, attach the frame together. Okay, so I started attaching the arms, and you attach the bottom plate from the bottom here. Just put two screws in each one. Put a little thread locker on it again. Make sure you put some thread locker on there again put those screws in. Now I'm going to run this helicopter, this hexacopter in uh, hexacopter X. So I actually wanted two white arms at the front here and then I wanted um, the rest of the darker arms off the back. In this uh, Hobby King kit you get three white arms and three dark arms which is not what you really want. You want two arms up front so you can uh, distinguish orientation. So what I actually did is I actually painted one of my white arms uh, kind of red, so it's not exactly the same color as those. But so then the three dark colors would be off the back, and the two uh, white arms are going to be off the front. So uh, when you see this in the rest of the video, that's what it is. It's just a painted white arm. So I have four dark arms off the back, and I can see my front arm orientation. So I'm just going to continue putting all the arms on the bottom, and we'll start it again. Okay, now we got our bottom plate on. Firmly attached two screws on each one of the bottoms. Now we got to attach four screws into each arm on the top arm. When you're doing the bottom arms, also make sure that you run the wires uh, under the two arm legs under here. Um, it just makes for a nice, neat uh, fixture of our speed controls later on underneath. So I'll go ahead and screw on our top plate. Okay, now that we got our arms all attached onto the top and bottom plate, I'm going to attach my KK2 board to the top plate. Um, in some configurations, people put them on the bottom plate because this is the LCD and we need access to the um, buttons. We've got to put our flight controller on the top plate. So um, I just got some double stick foam tape on the back here. Just going to peel that off. What I'm actually going to do is use this uh, little piece of foam that actually came with the little container when you order a uh, KK2 board. It comes in this little foam container. I actually peeled that off. I'm going to use that as just a little extra foam protection between the top plate and where I attach the KK2 board. So that should go on nice and easy. Let's peel off my foam tape. Attach that on there like that. I've marked off on the um, top plate the very approximate uh, center position of the 
um, top plate so I can mount the board right there and I'll just put more double stick tape there and mount the board. Okay, now I'm getting ready to actually attach the board. Just make sure that you have the controller pointing in the direction you want it to go. So I'm doing this in um, hexcopter X configuration. So this would be forward. LCD is forward. You get it centered right nice exactly where you want it to go. And then attach it with the double stick, double sided tape. And there you go. Okay, now that I have the uh, KK2 board uh, securely attached to the top plate, the next thing I did was just connect my um, three leads from each uh, speed controller to each motor and just went around and connected all those. The other thing I did is I routed the um, ESC wires that connect to the KK2 board over here just make sure that the black wire always go out and this is a hex X configuration so this is one two three four five six in rotation and then I actually marked on here um, the directions of the propellers on each one so this one goes clockwise this one goes counterclockwise and so on the way I got to that is I powered up the KK2 board and I went to motor layout and uh, I'll go through that later on and show you how you do that. But so I got everything connected and um, ran the the, uh, the wires through. The next thing I have to do is connect our receiver. So I'm actually going to mount my receiver down below, underneath on the on the bottom plate. And then you need these male to male connectors to attach to your receiver. So again, the black wire goes on the outside, and you attach one of these to each of the. Uh, wires here and you're going to need four connectors so you're going to be connecting your um, elevator, aileron, rudder and throttle controls to your radio which is the first four channels so basically the first four channels here are, are going to correspond to the first four channels on most receivers so I'll go ahead and plug that in and we'll go in from there. Okay, now that we've got all our motors connected to our speed controls, we're going to power up our KK2 board. We have all our receiver channels hooked up, one, two, three, four um, channels, and then uh, the fifth channel is auxiliary, which we're going to switch in and out of uh, auto level mode. This is connected to uh, a switch on your radio. And then, of course, we have all six of our motor outputs connected here. The KK2 board gets its power from the very first one. So whatever uh, speed controller is hooked up to um, the first connector, that's where it gets its power from. So we'll go ahead and power up our KK2 board here. Turn my radio on. I'm just using a Futaba 7C radio here. And if you set it set up to a new model in acro mode, so so we're gonna zoom this in a little bit here so you can see it well. We're gonna power this up. I'm trying to go through this quicker. There's a lot of videos about programming your KK2 board online. So okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna hit menu. We're gonna go down to receiver test. We're gonna hit enter. And basically, in receiver test, it's, it's just going to check. You're going to use your radio, and you're going to move your channels back and forth. And so when I hit aileron right, it should say right. When I hit aileron left, it should say left. Um, if there's a number there, you can use your, um, your trims to get these to zero. You want to get these as close to zero as possible. So just use your trims, get them as close to zero as possible. And then you um, go down to the next one. So aileron, right and left, make sure that's right. Elevator, forward and backward, make sure it corresponds to the radio. We've got throttle, um, full and idle. Then we've got um, rudder left and rudder left, right. So basically make sure that's straight. The other one you got here is auxiliary. And auxiliary, right now it's on off and then on. 
off and on. So um, we'll start with that off. Okay, so there, there you go. There's um, your receiver test, okay? We're gonna have to just deal with this beeping because I don't feel like unhooking my motors for this. So then we go down, 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 oops, up. Let's go to mode settings, enter. This is where we change from the self-leveling to change when you when you turn it on, it'll actually say stick. So it'll actually be in stick. So I recommend changing this to auxiliary, and that way you can change it from a channel on your radio. Okay, let's go back. Let's go down stick scale. We don't need to do right now. Miscellaneous settings, we're not gonna do right now. Self-level settings we'll do later. Camera stab, that's later on. Okay, oops, we have to go down to sensory test. We'll hit enter. We'll just check, make sure all our gyros and accelerometers are good, make sure they're all okay. Hit back, go down. ACC calibration, enter. We're gonna hit this, we're gonna hit continue. Okay, good. Okay, that's all good. Let me go down. Make sure under there. Right now we got, we'll go down to load motor layout first. I've already chosen the motor layout, but I'll show you how to do it. You go to a load, mode, a load motor layout, and for this hex, you're gonna see all the different uh, choices you have. Quadcopter X, quadcopter plus, um, uh, X8, hexacopter, octocopter. We've got lots of different choices here, but for this particular model, what we're going for is hexacopter X. So we're gonna go up, hexacopter X, choose there, whoops, and hexacopter X, I hit enter. Are you sure? Yes. Right now it shows me the motor layout. What I actually did was, you look at this little diagram right here, and I actually wrote on all the different, um, all the different uh, motor, you know, the motors I actually wrote what motor it is, what motor number it is, and then what direction that motor should be going in. That way I know for future reference. But that's where you get this from. This is what tells you um, what motors you're gonna be, what number motor and what direction each one of the motors should go in, which we'll do later on when we go to uh, make sure our motors are in the right uh, direction. Okay, we'll hit back. Back, back, okay good, so now we're back, back to the beginning here. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is calibrate our speed controls, which is extremely important. Okay, so I'm gonna unplug the power. To calibrate the speed controls, you have to put your radio on full power, full throttle. So you start with your radio in full throttle and you're going to power up the rate, power up your KKT board while pushing button number one and button number four. This can be a little tricky and it's really hard to do with one hand. So I'm going to try and do this to kind of show you. And we'll calibrate our um, speed controls. So I'm going to so do a sort of block in your view here. Okay. Okay. Okay, they should be calibrated. So what I did was, I didn't actually show you because I was using both my hands. When I first um, plugged it in, it was at, uh, the radio was at full throttle. And then, was at full throttle. And then when um, I heard my first two beeps, I pushed it down to um, idle. And then you hear more beeps, and that's when you know you're calibrated. The way to test this is to put your radio into, um, whoops, put your radio into, take it out of safe mode, and you take it out of safe mode by pushing down to the bottom right hand corner, and that puts it on armed. And when you put it on armed, you give it a little bit of throttle, all your motors should start up at the same time. So that's how I know. And all my motors, just in a wide angle, all my motors now are all spinning. 
Okay. And clean that down again. It's really important that you uh, calibrate your speed control correctly. And if it, when you go to start it back up again, if the motors aren't all coming out at the same time, you probably have not calibrated your speed controls correctly. And from there, we are going to go and show um, the motor rotation. <laughs>